This year marks the 74th anniversary of the Mystery Writers of America's Edgar Awards, one of the mystery and crime fiction world's highest honors. All of these mysteries were shortlisted for the Best Novel or Best First Novel category, and I know I'm glad that I didn't have to pick a winner because these are all spine-tingling, riveting mysteries. Get reading as part of OPL's Summer Reading Challenge. As you read books and engage in the activities, you will receive badges and be eligible to win some really great prizes. First up, we have The Stranger Diaries by Ellie Griffiths. An English teacher with an expansive knowledge of Gothic literature finds herself tangled in a web of murder and mystery that begins more and more to be a kind of twisted work of Gothic storytelling. There is a strong dose of dark atmospherics, a shifting viewpoints between English teacher Claire, her daughter Georgia, and Detective Sergeant Harbinder Carr, serve to heighten the tension in a multi-layered, splendidly creepy Gothic tale. The Stranger Diaries is a page-turning, spooky tale at the perfect intersection of procedural and psychological thriller. Fake Like Me by Barbara Borland Another page-turner, this time about art imitating life. The creative process confronts reality in this compelling literary thriller centering on art, identity, and deception, and shining a light on the nature of female ambition and desire and the dark heart of inspiration. In this razor-sharp, compelling satire of the contemporary art world, author Barbara Borland nails the creep factor and her narrator's high tolerance for it. I don't want to reveal too much of the plot, but I can tell you that your jaw will drop a few times, and there is a twist that you simply will not see coming. Smoke and Ashes by Abir Mukherjee this is a brilliantly conceived murder mystery set amidst political and social turmoil in 1921, Calcutta. Mukherjee's work is playful while also offering a serious look at colonialism and cross-cultural mystery. Captain Sam Wyndham of the British Imperial Police and his Indian assistant, Sergeant Surrender Not Banerjee, are two very appealing characters, each presenting a different perspective of colonial India, revealing what each of them gives up in order to serve king and country. Mukherjee's dry wit and amazing grasp of the social conventions of both the British and Indians during the Raj period, and of the political upheaval sparked by India's fight for freedom, give authenticity to this historical mystery. I think this is probably my favorite. Good Girl, Bad Girl by Michael Robotham this is a fiendishly clever and suspenseful novel about a dangerous young woman with a special ability to know when someone is lying, and the criminal psychologist who has to outwit her in order to survive. Six years ago, a girl is discovered hiding in a secret room in the aftermath of a terrible crime. Half-starved and filthy, she won't tell anyone her name, or her age, or where she came from. Maybe she is 12, maybe 15. She doesn't appear in any missing persons file, and her DNA cannot be matched to an identity. Six years later, still unidentified, she's living in a secured children's home with a new name, and she's demanding the right to be released as an adult. A criminal psychologist, haunted by his own tragic history, must decide what price he's willing to pay for the truth. The Good Detective by John McMahon a detective who has lost the ability to see the line between smart moves and disastrous decisions agrees to help out a woman by confronting her abusive boyfriend. At the scene of his newest murder case, he finds the very same man that he would swear was still alive when he saw him the night before, and the detective's fingerprints are all over the crime scene. That same day when the dead body of a black teenager is found in a burned-out field, the detective realizes he might have killed the number one suspect of this horrific crime. Amid rising racial tension and media scrutiny, a conspiracy leading all the way back to the time of the Civil War is uncovered. Risking everything to unravel the puzzle, even as the detective fights his own personal demons, he races headlong towards an incendiary and life-altering showdown. The River by Peter Heller Wynne and Jack have been best friends since college orientation, bonded by their shared love of mountains, books, and fishing. 
Years later, they plan the ultimate canoe trip in northern Canada, and they anticipate long days of leisurely paddling and picking blueberries, and nights of stargazing and reading paperback westerns. A wildfire making its way across the forest adds an unexpected urgency to the journey, but one night, with the fire advancing, they hear a man and woman having a vicious argument on the fog-shrouded riverbank. The next day, a man appears on the river, paddling alone. Is this the same man they heard? And if he is, where is the woman? From this charged beginning, we are off on a headlong, heart-pounding story of desperate wilderness survival. Don't forget to join our summer reading challenge. Log your reading and participate in great activities to earn digital badges. Plus, you'll have a chance to win some truly great prizes along the way. Enjoy!